11 and a half inch AR pistol. What's an echo trigger? What is the best dual barrel length for a 5.56 AR-15 and why is it 11 and a half inches? Welcome back to Sawtooth Tactical. Today we're going to talk about that and just another point as to why pistol braces are something that shouldn't go away. Before we get started, please subscribe to the channel. Please like, comment, and share. All that stuff helps me out tremendously. So why do I think 11 and a half inches is the perfect barrel length for a dual AR-15? Well, for a lot of reasons. So your standard first AR-15 most people get is going to be 16 inches. That's what my first was um, because that is the minimum barrel length to have a rifle in the eyes of the ATF. Now, we have been able to have AR pistols for a long time now with pistol stabilizing braces on them. And I've done a few videos about what's happening with the stabilizing brace rule this week, um, which I'll link to down below, because they're trying to get rid of these or at least make them register them as SBRs or short barreled rifles, which, which sucks. <laughs> And I'm going to explain why everyone loves a short barreled AR so much these days. So, a long, long time ago, in a land not so far away, um, the NFA was born. And the whole point of the NFA was to regulate what they considered to be um, exceptionally dangerous firearms. But it had to do with what was going on at the time. And so they regulated things like full auto, machine guns, suppressors, and short barreled rifles, short barreled shotguns. Now, since then, in modern times, short barreled ARs are not really a problem as far as crime goes. There is statistically almost zero crimes committed with short barreled rifles, um, but they're still regulated under the NFA. Luckily for us, a company by the name of SB Tactical, along with Sig Sauer and some other brands at this point, they came out with these stabilizing braces, which made it so that we could have legal AR-15 pistols, which is an AR with less than a 16 inch barrel, um, but a pistol that we could actually stabilize and shoot in a comfortable position and yes I'm putting this up to my shoulder because the ATF has said that it is okay to occasionally shoulder stabilizing braces at least until this week so these things became extremely popular um, you know the mark 18 10.3 inch AR barrel um, one of the most effective platforms that's been um, used by the military for years but this video is about why I think 11.5 is the way to go if you're thinking about a short AR. Now, we'll see what happens this week. We might have to actually <laughs> make your short AR an SBR. But if you wanted an SBR anyway, it might be the right time to get one because with their amnesty registration period, you can put a brace on it and get a free SBR out of it or so we think so far, we will see. But why 11.5? Why, why not seven and a half inches? Or why not 16, obviously? So my reasoning is this, and I do love these shorter barrels. I've got an eight inch barrel on my nine millimeter AR, an eight inch barrel on my 300 Blackout. But those two calibers are optimized for shorter barrels, nine millimeter, was designed to shoot out of handguns. So putting an eight inch barrel on a nine millimeter chambered AR just gives you a little bit more velocity, a little bit more effective range and better terminal ballistics. 300 Blackout also designed for use out of shorter barrels. In fact, it was designed to replace the MP5 as like the SMG 
um, for the military and to be a very easily suppressed round and still have, again, those effective terminal ballistics, um, you know, effective on target out of a short barrel has very fast burning powder. Well, 5.56, five, which is the most common caliber that AR-15s are chambered in, was actually designed for use out of a 20 inch barrel. Now, the thing with that is this, and yes, for certain applications, longer barrels, definitely a good thing. I have found from my own personal applications, the shorter the barrel, the better, because I like something that is maneuverable and fast, easy to handle. And I'll admit right now, this 11.5 feels a lot less unwieldy than this 16 inch AR does. Now, I love my 16 inch AR, don't get me wrong, this thing's fantastic, but I end up using this one a lot more often, unless I'm trying to shoot out to some greater distances, in which case the LPVO and the longer barrel comes in handy. But don't get me wrong, 11 and a half inches will get you out to pretty decent distances and be extremely accurate and very effective to most of the distances that you're gonna commonly engage targets at. And the thing about 11 and a half inches, so even if you added a suppressor to this 11 and a half inch barrel, you're still only getting to be about the same length then as this 16 inch AR. Whereas if you're gonna suppress a 16 inch, then you've got a, a 20 inch barrel and that becomes a very long thing Say you had to use it for home defense, CQB purposes, that's gonna be difficult to move around inside your home, hallways, rooms, things like that. A shorter barrel is just much easier to, to move around. And so that's why I fall in love with the shorter barrels and I keep building ARs with shorter and shorter barrels, but again, using the calibers that were meant for those. For 5.56, five, I think 11 and a half is perfect because again, to me, it's the shortest length you can go and still, and I know all the Mark 18 boys are gonna say I'm wrong, 10.3 is probably the very shortest you can go and still have a reliable, effective 5.56 five, chambered AR. But I like 11.5, it's just an extra inch, a little more than an inch, gives you that bit more dwell time which is gonna help with reliability and cycling the weapon. And what dwell time is, is this. So, right he about here on the barrel, I know it's hard to see under that handguard, is the gas block. And what the dwell time is, is as your round is coming down the barrel, between the time that it passes the gas block and escapes out of the muzzle is the dwell time. And that's the time that your gas block, gas tube, just your gas system, um, is pressurized in order to cycle your bolt carrier group, um, which is how your AR-15 functions. Now, as soon as that bullet leaves the end of the muzzle, those pressures drop. You don't have pressure pushing back on the bolt carrier group anymore. And so the less dwell time you have, technically the less reliability you can rely on. Um, because you just have less pressure pushing back on your bolt carrier group. Now, the less dwell time sometimes is going to make it be a softer shooting gun, um, which is nice. That's why, you know, the longer, like 16 inch barrels and stuff, everybody is going toward a mid length gas system rather than carbine length these days. Um, because you don't need that much dwell time to be reliable. The other thing, besides dwell time for reliability's sake, is also you velocity. So velocity is very important when it comes to 5.56, five, it's 223. So it's a velocity dependent cartridge. And what I mean by that is in order for 5.56 five, to be effective, it needs to be going fast enough to actually tumble and break apart and do what it's supposed to do on target in order to be effective. And yeah, I'm, I don't wanna get shot by a seven and a half inch AR, just like I'm sure nobody else does either. But at a certain distance with shorter barrels, 
that effectiveness drops off significantly at distance. And with 11 and a half inches, so with each inch that you lose of barrel length, you, you lose a significant amount of velocity. And the reason for that being, as the bullet's heading down the barrel, um, you have those pressures building behind it. And so the entire time it's going down the barrel, it's picking up velocity. As soon as it leaves that barrel, that velocity is, you're starting to lose velocity. And so the longer the barrel you have, the more time that that bullet has pressure behind it, the more velocity it's gonna pick up. And so like I said, 5.56 five, is designed for a 20 inch barrel. It gets like full powder burn, I think in 22 inches, something like that. So even 16 inches, you're still not getting the, the full capability of that cartridge, though you're getting pretty close. With 11 and a half inches, you're getting even less. And you have all these different barrel lengths in between. You have 12, 5, 13, 7, 13, 9, 14, 5, which I am planning on doing like a 13, 9, 14, 5 pin and weld build soon. And this kind of goes back to the whole same thing with the NFA. Pin and weld is what you have to do in order to get that magical 16 inch barrel length with your muzzle device permanently attached so that you can call it a rifle, put a stock, vertical foregrip, things like that on it. Otherwise, it is a pistol or an SBR if you go that route. So this is where I get into kind of the point of my video. I feel like an 11 and a half inch AR is the perfect, you know, you have give and takes with everything when it comes to firearms. And if you're gonna get, take something, you're gonna give something. So by getting that maneuverability and that ease with which to, you know, just use your weapon by having the shorter barrel, you're, you're losing that velocity, you're losing dwell time, things like that. And that's why I think 11.5 is kind of the Goldilocks area where you still get the good reliability. This is a Palmetto State Armory AR, which is definitely not top of the line. And it's been 100% reliable for me through a lot of rounds. I've had it for a few years. I've used the heck out of this thing and it's been perfectly reliable. You also, with that barrel length, get decent enough velocity to have effective terminal ballistics at most ranges that you would use something at this at. Now, I've got just a red dot on this for kind of like CQB kind of work. Although now that I've built this 300 blackout, that's gonna be my new home defense weapon. I do think I'll put a magnifier on this to be able to reach out to a little bit further distances because again, with 11 and a half inches, you can do that effectively. But my problem is this. This is like perfect. And it's not any more dangerous than a 16 inch AR. But this week they want to outlaw these pistol braces. They want to not ban them, but make them NFA items um, to where you have to register them as a short barreled rifle because what do you know, people have been using them in the most ergonomic and effective way to make their short barreled ARs effective weapons. Um, which there's nothing wrong with that. The only people that are using pistol braces are law abiding gun owners that are trying to follow the laws anyway. So why go after those people? I don't really get it. Um, and I think that is why we need to do everything in our power to fight what's going on right now because I am not the only person that likes ARs or AKs with barrels shorter than 16 inches. I think they're just much easier to use um, and, and they're very effective and very reliable. They're, they're great in just about every way. And the reason why they've become so popular is because of these pistol braces. Because before the braces, you either had to register your short barreled AR as an NFA item, or you had to just use the buffer tube on your cheek, which is not nearly as effective as having all these points of contact. So get a hold of your representatives, get a hold of your senators, 
donate to Gun Owners of America, Firearms Policy Coalition, anybody that is fighting this fight, do what you can. I know that there are going to be lawsuits coming down, um, I'm sure like this week, next week, to fight this. But we gotta do everything we can to fight this thing. Um, it's very important to me. I've got pistol braces on a bunch of different ARs because I like shorter barrel ARs. As I'm sure many of you do too. And if I had wanted to SBR them, I would have SBR'd them. I want AR pistols because you, you have a little bit more leeway with a pistol. This is considered a handgun just like this is. And so you can take it with you across state lines. You can conceal it in your vehicle. There's, there's a lot of things that you can do with pistols that you're not allowed to do with short barrel rifles. Um, and you're not on a gun registry with a pistol. And with, throughout history, throughout the world history, registration has always led to confiscation. We don't want to be on a list just because we have the most effective weapons for protecting our families, our homes, the things that we've worked hard for and the people that we love, right? <clears throat> so anyway, I love you guys. I, uh, every video I'm making this week has something to do with pistol braces because of what's going on um, and this is very important to me. So if you like this, please like, share, subscribe to Sawtooth Tactical and leave me a comment. What do you think is the best barrel length? Do you agree with me 11 and a half inches or do you like something longer or shorter? And what do you think about what's going on with pistol braces? And from Sawtooth Tactical, stay strapped or get clapped.